Blake Shelton is one of the biggest country stars the world has ever seen. Taking inspiration from some of the genre's greatest artists, like Willie Nelson and Tim McGraw, Blake knew that his destiny was in music and would stop at nothing to achieve his dream. Anytime uh, the fans are the ones that are making the decision out there, that's, uh, that's really where, at the end of the day, where the rubber meets the road. And I couldn't be more thankful that they did that. In 2001, Blake was terrified he was going to be a one-hit wonder. His debut single, Austin, top country radio charts for five consecutive weeks. He was 25 years old, seven years into his Nashville run, and convinced that such staggering early success would be the height of his career. However, Austin turned out to be a career establishing hit. And he's managed to maintain his status as one of the most popular country artists of all time, releasing over 10 albums by 2021. And he has managed to spread his success past his country audiences with his spot on hit TV show, The Voice, being the longest running judge on the panel. Aside from his hit music career, Blake also has a famous restaurant called Old Red, the same name as the 90s George Jones song, which he covered early in his career. He runs them in his two home cities, Oklahoma and Tennessee. Aside from its menu, it attracts people with its laid back music venue. With a career that keeps reaching new heights, over 90 awards and countless number one hits, Blake Sheldon is bound to leave a lasting legacy on country music forever. Born in 1976 to parents Dorothy and Richard, Blake Shelton lived a quiet and simple childhood in Ada, Oklahoma, something he would reflect upon in his music throughout his career. Blake was surrounded by the fluid guitar riffs and emotive lyrics of country music, which heavenly influenced his musical taste from an early age. His uncle taught him to play guitar when he was just 12 years old. At the age of 15, he'd begun writing songs and was thinking about seriously pursuing a music career. By 17, Blake had graduated from high school in Oklahoma, and two weeks after leaving, took a leap of faith and moved to Nashville, Tennessee to pursue a music career. Blake works for a copy company and that he actually lost that job because he was trying to reach out to music publishers, trying to pitch them his music. So he was way more distracted trying to make himself a big country music singer than actually making copies at work. It wasn't long before Blake's gamble move to Nashville paid off, as his honest voice captured the attention of record labels. Blake Shelton certainly paid his dues in Nashville. He was not an overnight success. It took him until 2001 before he was signed to Giant Records. He had done a lot of singing in the area, but he was also interning at other record companies. In 2001, Blake released his first ever single titled Austin. The song is a classic story of love, heartbreak, and regret. So Blake Shelton's first single, Austin, did extremely well. It spent five weeks at number one on the Billboard country charts. But something happened with this record company. Giant Records closed shortly after they released the single. So he was transferred over to the parent company, and that's how he wound up at Warner Brothers Music. Obviously, uh, Blake made a splash in the country music genre because his uh, debut single, Austin, became number one went number one. A lot of artists can't say that for five weeks. 
that's quite an impressive uh, feat, you know, for a new artist. The music video for Austin is pretty basic. It's a cowboy in his convertible singing about a girl, and Blake Shelton's hair is amazing in the video. That's what's worth watching it for. I'm not buying If it's anybody else Wait for the tone You know what to do And P.S. If this is Austin I still love you Austin was a massive success becoming his first number one hit on the Billboard Hot Country singles, and instantly boosted his self-titled first album, which featured a popular song, All Over Me. The album received positive reviews, and people were excited to see what Blake would release next. Two years later, in February 2003, Blake released his second album, The Dreamer. The lead single for the album was The Baby, a soulful track that showed Blake in a more reflective state. So Blake Shelton in the video Baby is singing very soulfully to the camera. Um, he's reminiscing about where he came from. He's watching family videos and talking about how he was the baby of the family. Because I was her baby. I worked a factory in Ohio. A shrimp boat in the bio. I drove a truck in Birmingham. Turned 21 in Cincinnati. I called home to mom and daddy. I said, Your boy is now a man. It reached number one on the country charts, holding that position for three weeks. Blake's music career was taking off, and his popularity was rapidly increasing. Also in 2003, Blake married his longtime girlfriend, Kaynette Gurn. The pair had been high school sweethearts and were married in a small ceremony in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Blake Sheldon's Barn and Grill was the title of his third studio album, released in 2004. Its lead-off single, When Somebody Knows You That Well, peaked at number 37 on the country charts, while the follow-up track, Some Beach, became his third number one hit, holding the position for four weeks. Unfortunately, in 2006, Blake and his wife, Kaynette, realized that they weren't a perfect match, and the pair divorced that year. Proving he could maintain his success and hard-working attitude within music, Blake released his fourth studio album titled Pure BS in 2007. Pure BS was a massive success, becoming his highest chart-topping album so far, reaching number eight on the U.S. Billboard 200 chart and number two on the Billboard Top Country albums. On this album, Blake Shelton worked with three different producers, including Bobby Braddock, but he also worked with Brent Rowan and Paul Worley. The album was a huge success for him, and he had a ton of number one hits on this. Also in late 2007, Shelton made appearances on television shows, first as a judge on the talent competition, Nashville Star, and later on Clash of the Choirs, this helped boost his popularity with the public and introduces music to people of all ages. These first six years of his career had been intense but fulfilling. His spontaneous move to Nashville was paying off and his popularity was continuing to grow. Starting Fires was Blake Shelton's fifth studio album, released in 2009. This album kept the Blake Shelton sound alive with soulful country songs, as well as fun, upbeat, and fast-paced anthems. 
With Blake Shelton's fifth album, which was Starting Fires, he'd really evolved in his sound. He was feeling really confident. And each album continually produces hits for him. And he even brought in Miranda Lambert. He started doing duets with her. So they started recording together. The album lead single titled She Wouldn't Be Gone showed an aching Blake lamenting on past failed relationships. In the music video, She Wouldn't Be Gone, Blake Shelton's a little bit angsty singing about a girl, um, but it's great. It's just a guy and his guitar, and he's even singing while he's driving his truck and behind the wheel. But you really get the feel for Blake's music and his commitment to the song. In 2010, Blake Shelton made headlines, announcing his engagement to girlfriend Miranda Lambert after seeking her father's blessing. The pair had met in 2005, and after Blake's divorce in 2006, they had begun dating officially. Blake was very happily married to a woman he had known for a very long time called Kay Nett, who was also helping him out on the road as a road manager. When he did a duet on a TV show called Duets with an up and coming country music superstar called Miranda Lambert. The chemistry between Blake and Miranda was immediate and it was explosive and it was noticed by the audience and it was noticed by the people involved. You know, Blake said later when he watches and watched back the video of his first ever encounter with Miranda Lambert, he said, you know, I was a married guy and these things shouldn't have been happening, but they were. There was an incredibly powerful chemistry between Blake and Miranda, so much so that Blake's wife, Kaynette, ended up divorcing Blake over grounds of marital misconduct, leading many to assume that in fact it was Blake and Miranda's affair that um, torpedoed his marriage to Kaynette. Now, in country music, infidelity, adultery, is definitely not something that's cool. It, you know, the music is all about the promotion of family and values and God and Christianity, and it's not cool to get divorced, and it's certainly not cool to cheat on your wife. In fact, there's a whole genre of country music about women who want to kill the miserable SOB who cheated on them and get out their shotgun and everything. That's like a thing. So Blake cheating on his lovely wife was absolutely not acceptable in country music. But the fact that people seemed willing to forgive him is in great part to the fact that Blake Shelton is one of the most likable guys in country music, if, if not in Hollywood as a whole. He's very widely liked. He has a great personality, a great persona. And Miranda Lambert was considered also to be very likable. Everybody loved her music. She was in the group Pistol Annie's. She had some very big songs of her own. And the two of them were such a fantastically meant to be couple that people were able to kind of overlook their not very nice uh, beginnings. While the pair both admitted that being in a relationship with a fellow country artist wasn't the easiest thing, they were determined to make it work. Blake proposed to Miranda in May 2010 in the woods near her home in Tishomingo, Oklahoma. Shortly after their engagement, the pair appeared together at the 53rd Grammy Awards ceremony. Miranda performed her hit song titled The House That Built Me and was nominated for Best Female Country Vocal Performance for the same song. Blake, unfortunately, was not nominated in any category. However, he was given the opportunity to present Miranda before she performed. So I know you are a presenter tonight. Yeah. And you are presenting to your fiance. I am. 
What, what but I'm not presenting to her an award. I'm presenting my fiance to you all. Okay. I'm introducing Miranda on the show. Okay. So I'm not really sure what in the hell to say either yet. She'll be performing? She's performing uh, House That Built Me, which I think's up for overall song of the year. It's a pretty big night for Miranda, you know. I mean, it's it's one of those one of those nights that uh, it's going to be hard to top. You know, I think she's up for like four Grammys, and, uh, and the, uh, for a country artist, you know, that's that's a big deal. Yeah, is she feeling a ton of pressure, or was she relaxed coming into the ceremony? Uh, you know what? I never see Miranda uh, look nervous. You know, I see her look okay. you know, pissed off once in a while, <laughs> uh, but it normally it doesn't have anything to do with with the, with the industry. It just has to do with. Uh, uh, you know, stupid things like uh, the dog pen on the carpet. You know, she she gets more worked up about things like that than she does performing on music's biggest stage. You know, I ain't really heard her talk about it that much. I went and watched her rehearse today, and it's, it's a cakewalk to her. You know, this is what she does. Absolutely. What makes the Grammys such a special award? I don't know, because I've never been to one of these damn things before. <laughs> so uh, uh, I'm looking forward to. You know, whatever may happen, you know, I know there's going to be some crazy stuff going on in there and, and everybody's bringing their A game and and uh, as a, I'm looking forward to just sitting there as a fan of, of music, you know, having fun with it. The pair tied the knot in 2011 at Don Strange Ranch in Miranda's home state of Texas. The wedding hosted several high profile guests. Miranda's pickup truck was there, Blake wore cowboy boots. It was country music superstardom coming together and forging this incredible, incredible union. Blake and Miranda were one of the top couples across the genre. Everybody knew who they were, everybody loved them, and they were gonna last forever. In fact, as Miranda said several times herself, divorce is just not an option. After the wedding, Blake took a break from his work commitments to spend the rest of the month with his new bride. By the end of 2011, Blake was touring around the country and had even collaborated with Michael Buble. It was safe to say that Blake Shelton had become a household name in the U.S. Blake released the album Red River Blue on July 12, 2011, led by the single Honey Bee. The song received 138,000 downloads in its first week and was certified gold in its seventh week, setting a record for the fastest gold certification by a male country singer. On June 13, 2011, in its 10th chart week, Honey Bee went to number one on the Hot Country Songs chart, becoming his ninth number one and his fastest climbing. The album was expected to debut at number one on the Billboard 200 with around 110,000 copies sold. God Gave Me You, a cover of a Dave Barnes song, was the album's second single. It also reached number one. Drink On It, the fifth song on the album, hit number one in April 2012, giving him his 11th number one song. In April 2011, Blake became a coach on the first series of The U.S. Voice, alongside CeeLo Green, Christina Aguilera, and Adam Levine. Taking this job meant he had to spend a significant amount of time in California meaning his relationship with wife Miranda Lambert would have to be long distance for a while since she didn't want to move to California. Blake Shelton has really come into his own as a judge on the U.S. version of The Voice. As well-liked and famous as he was for being a country superstar singer, it is actually his role on that show which has elevated the level of fame that he has and made an entire new generation of people fall in love with him. 
his winning personality, his jokes, his jokes with co-judge Adam Levine, and the fact that he always uh, kind of references sheepishly his love of alcohol is something that everybody has kind of found endearing. The couple implemented a rule to never spend more than two weeks apart, which Blake admitted fell mostly on Miranda, as he couldn't feasibly leave the show's set very often. Blake's role on The Voice boosted his career, but success didn't stop there for him. At the 54th Grammys, Blake was nominated for two awards, one for Best Country Album for Red River Blue, and one for Best Country Solo Performance for the song Honey Bee. This is a big deal, you know, I've been doing this for, man, I don't, since 2001, I think I've made uh, eight albums and I've never been nominated for Grammys and stuff like that, so I'm I'm proud of it. I'm 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 pumped about tonight. So after eight years of making music, does it mean more to have it finally recognized here tonight? Uh, I don't know, man. You look back at, at things and, and you, I don't think I'll know what the what the most important thing that that happened for me career-wise along the way was until this is all over. But uh, I definitely want a Grammy. Damn it, I'd like to I'd like to have one. Freaking Taylor already beat me on, on uh, two of them tonight, so I have one chance left, so I got my fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. Unfortunately, Blake didn't win the Grammy for either category. However, it was clear that his music was getting the attention of fans and critics alike. On April 30th, 2012, Blake performed Over on the semifinals of the second season of The Voice. Over became Blake's seventh consecutive number one and his 12th number one hit to date. In early 2012, Blake sadly lost his father after a period of declining health. This deeply affected him and in response to the loss, Blake and his then wife Miranda Lambert wrote a song that reflected his emotions to losing family members. Blake Shelton took the stage with Miranda Lambert at Super Bowl 46 in February 2012 to open the event, singing a duet version of America the Beautiful. It marked their first TV performance since their May 2011 wedding. America, America, God shed his grace on. In October 2012, Blake released his first Christmas album, Cheers, It's Christmas, which peaked at number one and number two respectively on the top holiday albums and top country albums charts. After a while, focusing on the voice and his married life, Blake went back into the studio to record his next studio album titled Based on a True Story. The album debuted at number three on the Billboard 200 and became the ninth best-selling album of 2013. Blake didn't take long to follow up the success of this album and went straight back into the studio to release his ninth studio album titled Bringing Back the Sunshine. Blake's ninth studio album, Bringing Back the Sunshine, was released in September 2014, and it did really well in its first week, selling over 100,000 copies and topping the country music charts. The lead single, Neon Light, was upbeat, displaying Blake's stage presence and production value that he now had during his live shows. Blake Shelton's video, Neon Light, it's amazing because it's just Blake in concert and you see all the fans having a good time, having a few drinks, dancing to the song. You can tell that even though he's very successful, he's still a good old country boy. In his video for Neon Lights, you know, you get to see really what it's like to go to a Blake Shelton concert. Of course, not exactly, but you see him interacting with fans, signing autographs, singing, you know, smiling. Generally, it's a very positive, relaxed video. And I love it for that reason. I think it gives you kind of an inside look at what what he's like. There's a neon light at the end of the tunnel. It ain't all that bright, but even though it's subtle, it's
He just comes across as a really down-to-earth, normal guy, the kind of guy that maybe you went to high school with or your sister dated, but it's somebody that we all know. And I think that despite the fact that he's so rich and he's so famous and he's so successful, you still feel like you'd want to sit next to him in a bar and have a beer. And that is the overall appeal of this guy. He is impossible not to like. From mid-2014 to early 2015, Blake and Miranda were both at the peak of their careers, topping the charts with every album they released. And not only were they performing on each other's songs, they were also touring together around the country. Blake's patriotism was clear in 2014 as he signed up with J.C. Penney and the United Service Organization to help service members in more than 200 locations to keep them connected to the people, places, and things they love. We've been working together, uh, JCP uh, and myself, and uh, for I think a couple of years now. And we've done all kinds of, of cool events uh, in the last couple of years. We did something really cool in, in uh, New York City last year during Christmas time and got to perform with a the choir, the USO choir, and, and uh, it was really neat. And, and uh, over the last couple of years, I guess we've raised almost $5 million doing, doing uh, you know, this partnership. And, and uh, I'm really proud to be a part of it. Tonight's going to be really special, too. Oh, it feels great. I didn't, you know, I have the easy part on, on stuff like this. I, uh, they come up with all the cool ideas, and, and, uh, and I'm excited to be a part of it. And it makes it fun for me, too. To, it's a surprise for me to, to meet these people. and and uh, be able to, you know, high-five them and, and tell them how much we appreciate what they do. Together with uh, J.C. Penney, we've raised almost $5 million for the USO. Blake, during this event, was given the chance to present a check for $10,000 to the USO and a proud military family who would help serve their country. I love and support our military. It's a big deal to me. And y'all, too, I can tell. I want to make. I want to get this right because I want to do something. I want to introduce y'all to some people uh, that are here tonight. Where's Roland? Bring, bring uh, Roland and his wife and and one of their three kids out. Come on out here. This is cool. How you doing, Roland? Hey, by the way. Mama, Mama and, and Daddy, Daddy are in the military, in the military and, they and they have three, three kids, kids, okay? Let's, Let's do this. this. Um, I want to make sure I say all this right. So, so J.C. Penney and the USO are here with this special military family. And these, these people, people dedicate, dedicate their lives uh, to serving our military and us. So... On, on behalf, behalf do you, you have, have, oh, you got, got it. it. Okay. okay. So, so on, on behalf, behalf of J.C. Penney, I'd, I'd like to give the USO and J.C. USO a J.C. Penney gift card to help families. families. Just, just like, like y'all. Where's, Where's it at? at? I got to say it just right. right. Okay. So, so I'm giving, giving that to you. That same year, Blake was inducted into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame for both his musical achievements and for the generous work he had done for his home state. He also took home the Male Vocalist of the Year at the 2014 CMA Awards. Sadly, in 2015, Blake's personal life hit the headlines again, but not for positive reasons. After months of speculation, the pair announced their divorce. Before their split, Miranda discussed the need for privacy in their relationship in a 60 Minutes interview that aired in November 2014, noting that while the pair does share so much of their lives, they still need some privacy for themselves. 
Cracks began to show when Miranda reportedly felt abandoned by Blake having fixed commitments in Los Angeles, filming The Voice. The pressures of fame and distance took a real toll on their marriage. By the time 2015 rolled around, Miranda Lambert and Blake Shelton's marriage was on its last legs. By the middle of the year, they were officially on the rocks, and Blake proceeded to file divorce papers. We are real people with real lives, with real families, friends, and colleagues, the couple said in a statement obtained by E! News. Therefore, we kindly ask for privacy and compassion concerning this very personal matter. However, that didn't mean there wasn't any acrimony, as they both accused the other of infidelity, although nothing was remotely proved. Blake's announcement that he and Miranda Lambert were getting divorced in 2015 took a lot of people by surprise. However, those in the celebrity world who kind of followed this couple for a long time were really not shocked at all. This uh, couple had been plagued with all kinds of rumors on both sides of infidelity, inappropriate behavior. There were stories about Blake's drinking. Even it was alleged that Miranda had been cheating with someone who worked with her on her tour and all kinds of stuff and accusations were being thrown at each other. So when they finally announced announced their split in 2015, it didn't come that much as a shock. At the same time, it was really sad because Blake and Miranda were like the first lady and president of country music, if that exists. They were really royalty. They really were royalty in country music and everybody wanted them to work, particularly because Blake broke up his first marriage in order to be with Miranda. So it was doubly sad. There is kind of a big age difference between them and I think you, know, you have to look at the fact that Miranda started going out with Blake when she was like 20 years old. She really kind of grew up as Mrs. Blake Shelton. And I think it became very difficult as they grew apart uh, when she got a little bit older. Miranda Lambert is a huge star in her own right. She's had several number one country singles and albums. She is a name that commands a great deal of attention. More recently, she's transformed her body with an incredible diet and workout and looks amazing. And that garnered her a lot of attention as well. Miranda Lambert is a country superstar. Blake went back into the studio alongside his commitments on The Voice and released his 10th studio album titled If I'm Honest in 2016. The album once again reached the top of country billboard charts and reached third on the US Billboard 200. Every time I hear that song was the lead single with its fresh pop sound. The video also felt very similar in style to his first single, Austin. If I'm Honest was a hit, and at the CBS People's Choice Awards won two awards, one for Favorite Country Album and one for Favorite Country Singer. I love it. I love it. I, I do not take this for granted at all. You know, uh, anytime uh, the fans are the ones that are making the decision out there, that's, uh, that's really where, at the end of the day, where the rubber meets the road because uh, we can have, all, you know, all the industry uh, inside of you know awards and, and committees and things like that but when people that are actually buying the albums and the tickets you know take time out of their day to pick up their phone or their laptop whatever they use to vote on and they do that for you means a lot because I know that's I mean it's a pain in the ass to, to do that you know and, and uh, they, they they did it and I can't believe it and I couldn't be more thankful that they did that I got to get, uh, I was telling someone earlier, I, I got a little home interior shelf, I think, that my mother passed down to me from a garage sale. She must have got it from somewhere, but uh, I don't think it'll hold. These things are heavy. Like, this is like, you could burn a bug with these if you had the sunlight just right. Uh, so I don't know. I have to, I'm going to have to build on, I guess, for my People's Choice Awards. Also in June 2016, 
Shelton celebrated the grand opening of his exhibit at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum. The exhibit, titled Blake Shelton, based on a true story, traces Shelton's career path and achievements, encompassing his humble beginnings in Oklahoma, his Nashville origins, and his eventual path toward mainstream success and recognition through his role as a coach on The Voice. Country music is always rooted or associated with good old, you know, values, small towns, etc. You know, just really the um, essence of American culture. And so I think, you know, uh, Blake has really captured that spirit. Um, they're really, you know, I can't really think of many scandals revolving around Blake. In a sense, he could be considered a good old American boy or the boy next door for some people, you know, here in the U.S. So I think in that sense, he's really touched uh, or caused a spark uh, and has really connected well with his audience. By 2017, Blake had released 10 studio albums and had been on The Voice for six years straight, not only developing a close relationship with Gwen Stefani, but also a good friendship with his other co-star, Adam Levine. Imagine my disappointment when I found out that this isn't a roast. Uh, it can be. <laughs> uh, no, I just want to talk about uh, my journey with Adam because I think it's uh, uh, been one of the most important relationships that I've made in my life. Uh, I first met Adam in, uh, I guess it was February or March of, of 2011, and I'll never forget this. We went up to this uh, boardroom, this, this room at the top of the Universal building over at Universal Studios, and and we were going to have this meeting. It was the first meeting ever of The Voice, like producers, NBC, and then who the coaches were going to be. And I remember sitting there. Of course, I was, I'm was i the country singer, so I was actually on time uh, for this meeting. And uh, so I'm sitting there, and, and uh, you know, eventually, you know, CeeLo Green comes walking into the room, man. It was like the cr coolest thing I'd ever seen in my life. You know, he had these huge sunglasses that look like satellite dishes on his on his face. And, and then, you know, a few minutes later, uh, Christina Aguilera came, actually her boobs came into the room and then about two minutes later, the rest of the, her body came, came around the corner. And, uh, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's Christina Aguilera. You know, that's it's unbelievable. And and then uh, a little while later, this this little scrawny guy comes comes walking into the room with a white T-shirt on, with a collar all stretched out. And, and if you would have told me then uh, that this guy was going to end up being uh, one of my best friends, I, I would have called you crazy. But uh, uh, that's what is this? Seven years later, six years later, whatever it is, uh, Adam and I have been on an, an incredible journey together and uh, we have both seen some ups and downs and and I've, I've seen you know a lot of ups and downs and, and I've never had a more honest and loyal friend uh, than Adam Levine uh, through my personal journey knowing him and, and uh, so uh, you know I know this getting a star on the Walk of Fame is a big deal and, and uh, we all know he's a huge star with music and movies and television but i'm happy to see him get this because he's my friend and and uh and nobody is more shocked i mean proud <laughs> than than i am that uh he's gonna have a star on the hollywood walk of fame forever congratulations brother i love you Later that year, Blake once again went back into the studio to work on his next album titled Texoma Shore. The album was another commercial success, reaching number one on the Top Country Albums chart and number four on the U.S. Billboard 200. The lead single titled I'll Name the Dogs was a much more country sounding song compared to previous singles. With the video showing Blake playing live at a traditional country wedding while people dance to his music. Baby, let's get right down to business. I'll hang the pictures, you hang the stars. You pick the pain, I'll pick a guitar. Sang you a song out there with the crickets and the frogs. You name the babies and I'll name the dogs. Yeah. You can park your car. 
car in the driveway. I'll park my truck. Blake Sheldon also owns a franchise of restaurants and entertainment complexes called Old Red. The first Old Red opened in his hometown of Tishomingo, Oklahoma in September 2017. A Nashville location opened in May 2018, and a third location in Gatlinburg opened in March 2019. A fourth location in Orlando, Florida opened in May 2020. That's my dream, that's my vision of somebody coming in here one day from, you know, wherever and stopping in to get a drink and, and, and I happen to be sitting here, you know, playing my guitar, singing some music. For me, it's as simple as this is my home, you know, to come here and and have a good time, maybe hear some music and, and, and uh, you know, have, have a burger and a drink or something and, and then walk out of these doors and go, oh my gosh, there's that over there. There's this down here. I knew if I did that, it would sell out really quick because people want to help out with that thing. So I am super smart. It seems like I sold out a show, but reaching out sold this thing out for me. Alongside his career success, Blake has also experienced some success in his love life. Rumors have been swirling surrounding Blake's closeness to The Voice co-star Gwen Stefani. Gwen had also been going through a divorce from her then-husband, Gavin Rossdale, around the same time Blake had been going through his own divorce. Back on April 29, 2014, Gwen Stefani announced she'd be joining The Voice as a judge. This would be where Gwen and Blake would meet and form a great friendship, understanding the struggles one another were going through. An image was shared for the first public live taping of this series, the first photo of Gwen and Blake together in any capacity. On September 18, 2014, Gwen and Blake appeared on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon to promote the new season of The Voice. The pair also sang a duet of endless love, and their chemistry became very apparent through the performance. The pair appeared to form a really good friendship and the press couldn't get enough. In November 2015, representatives for Blake Sheldon confirmed the romance between himself and Gwen Stefani. And they eventually both spoke about their relationship, saying they grew closer after supporting each other through their divorces. In February 2016, the pair made their first public debut on the red carpet at the Vanity Fair 2016 Oscars after party. Shortly after this in May, Gwen and Blake performed a duet, Go Ahead and Break My Heart at the Billboard Awards. The song was recorded for Blake's album, If I'm Honest. Their co-star and close friend Adam Levine opened up about their relationship and claimed the couple were so in love. Blake has a very good boy image for the most part. And I think that um, the audience can really see how happy Gwen is next to him. So maybe deep down inside the audience, you know, wants to believe that this is the one for Gwen. And, you know, she's really not one to be known for being in many relationships. She was in a relationship with uh, Gavin Rosdale for 13 years. That's a very long relationship, at least in terms of Hollywood standards. You know, a lot of these uh, celebrity couples you know, are dating one day and then the next day they're, you know, dating someone else. Um, and she also has children, you know, so I think she is looking for someone to settle with. There have been reports that uh, Gwen's kids really like Blake. So I think it's a good thing. And uh, fingers crossed, it'll be something that'll last a long time. Gwen Stefani has even said that she wrote a song uh, about Blake called Make Me Like You. So that's pretty much just a testament to how unafraid they are to show the world 
that they're in love with each other. On December 13th, 2019, Gwen was featured on Blake's single, Nobody But You, from his compilation album, Fully Loaded, God's Country. The song peaked at number 18 on the Billboard Hot 100 and 49 on the Canadian Hot 100. On July 24, 2020, Gwen and Blake released another single entitled Happy Anywhere, inspired by the COVID-19 pandemic. In the following years, the pair gushed over each other publicly in interviews and performances when finally, after five years together, Blake Sheldon proposed in October 2020. The pair intended on tying the knot with family and friends not long after their engagement. But due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, their wedding plans are currently on hold. There have been constant debates in the media about who will perform at their wedding, with stars such as Miley Cyrus and Adam Levine throwing their names into the mix. In March 2021, Blake announced Body Language, his first brand new full-length studio album in over four years. The album will include the singles Happy Anywhere and Minimum Wage. From humble beginnings in Oklahoma to worldwide superstardom, Blake Shelton has helped carve a new sound in modern country music. Since his debut in 2001, he's received positive reviews from musicians and critics. The New York Times described Blake as the most important and visible ambassador from Nashville to the American mainstream. Rolling Stone referred to him as one of country music's biggest stars over the past decade. Blake has also amassed a tremendous commercial impact on the country music industry. His debut single, Austin, off his 2001 platinum-selling self-titled album, tied the record set by Billy Ray Cyrus in 1992. Staying atop the country charts for five weeks, and setting the mark for an artist's debut single in the broadcast data systems era. With over 10 million record sales worldwide, a successful TV career, and countless awards under his belt, Blake has proved his musical talent is second to none, passing on his experience and helping upcoming artists on The Voice. His soulful vocals, energetic beats, and songs about love, loss, and home are just some of the factors that make his music timeless. His love and passion for country is noticeable within all of his songs. He is a natural-born star, and although his future may still be unwritten, it's plain to see that his music and legacy will live on for years to come.